Hi everybody, hope you're well. Uh, really quick tutorial today. I'm just going to be talking about self-oscillating filters um, because I am doing a few projects with self-oscillation at the moment and I thought that it'd be just uh, good to explain it. I remember years ago when I was first writing and recording music, it took me a little while to get my head around it. But you have to remember that was the age of print media when information wasn't always at our fingertips. Um, I'm going to be using my uh, Roland SH09. It's a monosynth with uh, a low pass filter um, which does self oscillate um, and it's got a uh, one oscillator one sub sub oscillator um, so we'll just explain I'll just explain what self oscillation is so if we think about a low pass filter and we're just going to be using a single oscillator with a sawtooth wave that's our F there our F3 now if we think about um, what filters do essentially they cut frequencies out this is a low pass filter it lets the low frequencies pass through and it blocks the higher frequencies and harmonics some of this might be revisiting basics but it's important to think about this when we talk about self oscillation we've got a saw wave with all its harmonics if we close the filter we can see we've removed the harmonics and we're just left with the fundamental frequency at the bottom. Now if we add resonance, what does resonance do? Well essentially resonance just adds a boost around the cutoff frequency point. So as you're closing the filter down, you, we add a boost to those frequencies there. And if you watch the scope, you'll see a little boost a little bump up here. At the moment it's just below the 5k point there on the scope. Yep. And if we close our filter, we get that sweep. That lovely resonant sweep sound that we all know and love. The important thing here is, well what happens if we keep adding resonance? Well, on filters that self-oscillate, if you keep adding, you get to a point where the peak itself becomes an oscillator and we can use cutoff frequencies to tune it and if we take our original oscillator out and then tune it to our F we're essentially left with a sine wave at that point, which we can then do things like you can add envelopes, LFOs, add the other oscillators back in, all kinds. And that is self-oscillation. It's really important to remember that not all, all synths self-oscillate, uh, not all filters self-oscillate. Um, polysynths that I've got here, so the Juno 2, the Core Poly 61, they don't, um, they don't self-oscillate. I'm not a soft synth connoisseur, and, and I can barely say it, to be honest. I remember soft synths never used to really be able to recreate uh, self-oscillation particularly well. Going through a few of the ones that I do have, like the Urs Heckman stuff and the, the Tau audio line, they seem to be able to produce um, self-oscillation on their filters. So whether you're using hardware or software, not all filters will be able to self-oscillate. I hope that's helped. And um, if you're going to watch some of the other videos, maybe that sort of gives a bit of background into what I'm doing. Thanks a lot. Bye.